Published, 1700 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 31st of March 2018. Updated, 2028 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 31st of March 2018. Jeremy Corbyn faced a revolt from women Labour MPs last night over claims his party has failed to take action against a male MP accused of wife beating. A meeting of Labour women MPs, attended by ex-Labour Deputy Leader Harriet Harman, backed calls to suspend the politician from the party after he allegedly used violence against his wife on repeated occasions. Ms Harman advised colleagues at the meeting of the Women's Parliamentary Labour Party that the complaint against the MP could be taken up with the Labour leader, his chief whip Nick Brown and party officials. But sources say there were also threats to, shame, the party leadership into taking action by making their call public if the Labour whip was not removed from the MP concerned. Women MPs were told the alleged wife beater had been reported to Labour HQ but officials had failed to act. One source said, the allegations against the man are horrific. There is no way he should be an MP and the party cannot just sit on its hands and do nothing. Jeremy Corbyn faced a revolt from women Labour MPs last night over claims his party has failed to take action against a male MP accused of wife beating. It is understood that Jess Phillips, who chairs the women's group, has since written to Mr Corbyn asking for the MP to be suspended pending an investigation. The row came as Mr Corbyn faced a deepening crisis over claims that he has failed to crack down on anti-Semitism in his party. On a day of dramatic new developments, leading Corbynista, Christine Shawcroft resigned from Labour's ruling national body after claims that she failed to act against anti-Semitic Labour activists, and was replaced by comedian Eddie Izzard. Labour MP John Mann, writing in this newspaper, said Mr Corbyn was unfit to be Prime Minister unless he expelled Ken Livingstone who has said Hitler supported Zionism, and claimed Labour faced up to 5,000 anti-Semitism complaints. Leading Blairite ex-MP Tristram Hunt called for London Mayor Sadiq Khan or ex-Foreign Secretary David Miliband to launch a new party to challenge Labour. A Jewish Labour donor revealed he had quit the party because he no longer felt any affinity or connection with it in the wake of the anti-Semitism row. Ms Shawcroft, who supports the hard-left momentum group that supports Mr Corbyn's leadership, was forced to step down as head of the National Executive Committee's Disciplinary Committee last week after she appeared to defend a council candidate accused of Holocaust denial. However, she quit the NEC altogether last night following calls for her to go from party deputy leader Tom Watson. Amid the row, a leaked letter that Ms Shawcroft wrote three weeks ago, seen by the most, defended her chairmanship of the NEC disputes panel but complained that she was stitched up. Last night she said she had quit because, it is clear that my continued membership of the NEC has become a distraction for the party, Harriet Harman, left-backed calls to suspend the politician from the party, while it is understood that Jess Phillips, right, has written to Mr Corbyn asking for the MP to be suspended pending an investigation leading. Corbynista, Christine Shawcroft resigned from Labour's ruling national body after claims that she failed to act against anti-Semitic Labour activists edited extract of the leaked letter by Christine Shawcroft who dramatically quit Labour's NEC last night from the moment I was elected to the National Executive Committee in 1999, I was made unwelcome, to put it mildly. I wasn't allowed on any subcommittees except the women's group. I campaigned against Blair over Iraq and never got the slightest support from unions. Jack drove me late into me, shouting. He should have been finished after he stood against Bill Morris. Labour MP Dromey, married to Harriet Harman, was the Blairite candidate in the 1995 Transport Union Leadership Contest and lost to left-winger Morris. Dromey told a pack of lies about what had happened during the Ludford Ramont selection. Ludford was ruined. Ramont was sacked as Tower Hamlet's mayor in 2015 over fraud claims. Shawcroft defended him, people thought I would be a useful idiot to chair the NEC Disputes Committee. I defended Labour members who were unjustly suspended but the unions never supported me. You have wrecked lives. I'm not angry because you stitched me up. I'm so used to that I barely notice. What more important is you stitched up my members, and they deserve better. I'm told I'll be standing down from the NEC leaving a bad taste in the mouth. I've had a bad taste in my mouth for the past two decades, Mr. Izzard will replace her because he had been runner-up in the last round of elections. The pro-EU comedian and activist had run on a platform of increasing diversity in the party. 
At the time he vowed, despite not being elected, I'll continue to do all I can to campaign for an open and welcoming Labour Party and to campaign with fellow Labour activists to help Labour win the next election and put Jeremy Corbyn in Downing Street. Last night, Sir David Garrard, who has donated £1.5 million to Labour since 2003, said that he had left the party because he no longer felt any affinity or connection with Labour following the row. The property tycoon accused the leadership of failing to adequately deal with the most blatant acts of anti-Semitism, and said the party he used to support no longer exists, and a further blow to Mr. Corbyn, former shadow minister Mr. Hunt became the latest Labour figure to call for a breakaway, left-of-center political force. Mr. Hunt, who quit politics last year to become director of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, said he was no longer certain to vote for Mr. Corbyn's Labour Party, even though he was still a Labour member. He said he was a floating voter and wanted a different political option. Mr. Hunt said that Britain was crying out for its own Emmanuel Macron, who quit France's discredited Socialist Party and stormed to power last year as leader of his own centre-left movement. Ian Marquet, if I could vote for Emmanuel Macron, I would, said Mr. Hunt. Individual backed by ideas is as important as the ideas, to cut through social media politics, you need a strong, substantive leader, somebody like Sadiq Khan or David Miliband, Mr. Hunt said both would make ideal leaders of a, pro-European, internationalist party that believes in social mobility, a market economy and social justice, Mr. Corbyn has denied being anti-Semitic. But Jewish peer Robert Winston has claimed that the Labour leader has, encouraged and endorsed, anti-Semites. Hostility to Jews had infected the Labour Party so it's become endemic, he said. The most has chosen not to disclose the identity of the MP and the wife beating claims. Labour sources denied the party had failed to act, saying the party leader's office had taken every opportunity to try to deal with the allegations. By John Mann, MP for Bassett Law for the Mail on Sunday Like all Labour supporters, I want nothing more than for Labour to be returned to power. But to achieve that we need a leader who can be trusted to be Prime Minister. There is no doubt that the latest disclosures surrounding anti-Semitism in the party have damaged our leadership. I welcome Jeremy Corbyn's apology for having endorsed a disgusting mural which showed Jewish bankers playing a Monopoly-style game on a board resting on the backs of bowed naked workers. But Mr. Corbyn's contrition is not enough. We were told last week that the party has a backlog of 74 cases of alleged anti-Semitism that are yet to be dealt with. But I have been told the problem is so widespread there could be anything from 2,000 to 5,000 claims of anti-Semitic behavior. It is no exaggeration to say this issue has become a serious threat to our ability to present ourselves to the electorate as a party ready to run the country. But it is not too late for Mr. Corbyn to redeem himself. The most egregious instances of anti-Semitism in labor have involved Ken Livingstone, who said Hitler supported Zionism. I have had one or two public confrontations with him over his views. In the eyes of many, Mr. Livingstone embodies all that is deplorable about labor anti-Semitism. Several complaints have been made against him but nothing gets resolved. Jeremy Corbyn apologized for defending a mural which showed Jewish bankers playing a Monopoly-style game on a board resting on the backs of bowed naked workers. Me advice to Mr. Corbyn is if you want to show you are serious about rooting out anti-Semitism, then expel Mr. Livingstone. But if he fails to do so, people would be entitled to believe that he is not fit to be Prime Minister. He needs to send a very clear message to anti-Semitic people in the Labour Party, you are not wanted. They should be kicked out whether they are activists or MPs. At least Mr. Corbyn has been spared the problem of dealing with Christine Shawcroft. Last night she finally quit the party's National Executive Committee after opposing the suspension of an apparent Holocaust denier. The increasing evidence that Labour members simply do not get what anti-Semitism is and that quite a number of them are trying to excuse Holocaust denial shows precisely why Mr. Corbyn has a duty to stamp his authority all over the issue. A failure to act decisively will haunt him and damage Labour for the next 10 years, John McDonnell blasted Alan Sugar after he tweeted an edited photo of Jeremy Corbyn sat next to Adolf Hitler. Lord Sugar has now deleted the tweet apprentice host Alan Sugar caused uproar in the anti-Semitism row yesterday, by tweeting an image of Jeremy Corbyn in a car with Hitler. The caption said, When you're pictured at Nuremberg and claim you thought you were going to a car rally, Lord Sugar, who quit the Labour Party in 2015, said Mr. Corbyn must take a tougher line on anti-Semitism. Nuremberg was host to Nazi propaganda events. 
Shapir, who is Jewish, said the tweet was a joke, adding, many a true word spoken in jest Corbin, comedian Eddie Izzard is replacing Christine Shawcroft on Labour's Nis Eddie Izzard first shot to fame in the early 1990s as a transvestite comedian who deploy a distinctive stream of consciousness monologues on the stand-up circuit. His absurdist riffs frequently addressed his enjoyment of cross-dressing and heels, and his own sexual leanings, which he has described as straight transvestite. His move into labor politics came under Tony Blair. By 1998, Izzard had become one of the biggest private financial donors to the party, appearing in party political broadcasts and declaring his ambition to become an MP. He has also acted in films, including Ocean's 12, and in 2009 completed 43 marathons and 51 days for sport relief. Izzard, who lost his mother to cancer when he was six, has said that he first realized he was a transgender person at the age of four when he watched another boy being forced to wear a dress by his sister.